Hey folks, welcome back to AI for BAs. Let's take a dip into the seemingly endless ocean that is acceptance testing. This session is about how ChatGPT can help you discover test scenarios based on business rules. As always, we start off by telling ChatGPT to play the role of an experienced business analyst. We certainly don't want our demo to fail due to lack of expertise. Our adventure starts with a simple question, namely, can it transform a policy procedure into a decision table? That's first step to get to, to uh, acceptance criteria or acceptance tests. We get an immediate positive response. It explains that decision tables are something an IT business analyst should be comfortable with. And to underscore its understanding of the concept, ChatGPT even offers us a perfect example. It creates a procedure with three business rules for approving a credit application. Then, it simply converts each condition into a role in the decision table and each business rule into a column. It also adds an action role indicating which action is triggered if all conditions in the column are met. Voila, clear, crisp, easy to follow. You can see how it transitioned from text to structured decision-making. Not bad, not bad at all. Also, interesting choice of example, as you'll appreciate in a minute or two. And FYI, I did not manipulate ChatGPT in any way to get this particular example. I did give it the convoluted procedure that you just had to unravel in the preceding assignment. Now, if you find conditions are more complex and difficult to unravel, so if you worked with this text in the previous assignment, you can appreciate how challenging interpreting it can be. I have to read through it myself five times before I know if I would qualify for credit based on this blob of text. I expect that the decision table will be a bit more complex because the rules are less clearly defined. So how did it do? Well, you might want to pause the video and take time to compare the decision table ChatGPT created with the one that you created yourself earlier. It should pretty much match, even though the representation may not be identical to the way your table looked. Ultimately, the recommended actions should be the same for any given set of conditions, regardless which representation you take. ChatGPT even adds a wonderful CYA note explaining its assumption that the credit can only be either good or excellent. Those are the only two mentioned. Taking average and bad credit into account would cause the table to grow further. I love it. However, we're not halfway there yet. Now let's migrate into the land of Gherkin with its given when then structures. As covered in an earlier demo, GWT is a huge simplification for acceptance criteria and testing. I demonstrated how well ChatGPT recognized acceptance criteria. Let's see how it does in converting its own decision table into test scenarios. Okay, each row of its decision table was transformed into a neat scenario that described a set of conditions, a triggering event, and a result. For instance, given the customer's debt load and credit request exceeds four times their gross income, and the customer's credit is excellent, and the customer has been on the same job for over five years, when the customer applies for credit, then the credit request should be approved with a cosign. Now, cool. That's a direct translation of column two from the decision table. If your debt load plus the credit request exceeds four times gross income and credit is excellent and you've been on the job for over five years, approve the credit with a cosign. Same is true for scenario two, column three, and so on. You can see that there are a total of five outcome columns in our decision table matching the five scenarios, meaning it suggests one test scenario for each column. Now, what happens when we have a bunch of scenarios that are only different because of the values for various variables. Gherkin offers a handy tool called a scenario outline. It's like a template for a group of scenarios using an example table in which each row is translated into a scenario with assigned data values and outcomes for each defined variable. So when I ask ChatGBT to create scenario outlines from these scenarios, it creates one scenario outline for each scenario. Outline two matches scenario two, outline three matches scenario three, and so on. Hmm. Hmm. 
Maybe that was because of how I phrased the prompt. I don't know. Okay. That's not entirely what I'm looking for, but more on that in a moment. Now, just for the heck of it, I threw in a curveball. I asked it to perform boundary value analysis, a test data engineering technique on uh, scenario outline number two. The technique is based on the widely accepted theory that bugs are more likely to be at the edges of data sets. ChatGPT confirmed that it knew exactly what I was asking for and based on my prompt. It expanded scenario outline number two's example table that it had created by adding four boundary values that made sense. That extended my examples to cover edge cases for our scenario. Think we're done? Not yet. My final challenge was to ask ChatGBT to combine all scenario outlines into one. Now, it might seem complex and a bit daunting, but I simplified it down as much as I possibly could. ChatGBT was then able to combine the original example tables. But for some reason, it kind of neglected that whole boundary value thing. <laughs> it would be just one more step to incorporate those as well, but I'll leave that up to you to test. I should mention that some people find dealing with five individual scenarios without variables simpler, even though there's an awful lot of repeated text. Others like the compactedness of a single example table containing a row for each possible scenario. Well, the beauty of it, with ChatGBT, you can have your choice how you want to see your test scenarios represented. Take whichever makes the most sense to you and your stakeholders. So I hope you enjoyed this roller coaster ride through business rules, decision tables, Gherkin scenarios, and scenario outlines. I threw in that boundary value analysis example for flavoring. You now have a toolbox to simplify your complex decision-making procedures and write efficient acceptance tests. And that's it for today, folks. Wishing you a happy prompting, and I'll see you again in the next edition of AIs for BAs. Till then, keep exploring, keep learning, and don't forget to laugh whenever you get the chance.